we want to continue uh, in the autumn. Uh, for today's session, I'm joined by uh, two cabinet members uh, who are now asked to introduce themselves, Councillor Miranda Williams, who looks after health and adult services, and Councillor Matt Morrow, who's our cabinet member for children and young people. Over to you, Miranda. Hi there, so I'm Miranda Williams. I'm the cabinet member for health and adult services. I've been a cabinet member for six years now, first elected in 2010, and I joined the cabinet in 2014. And I am very, very pleased to, uh, to have taken up this role in, in May just gone. Fantastic. Matt? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Moore. I'm a councillor, one of the councillors representing Plumstead, and I'm also serving on the cabinet. Um, as the lead for children's services. Um, so I've just started that, uh, I think it's eight weeks ago, and it's been a fantastically interesting time with lots of things going on with, with schools and other parts of children's services. So very pleased to be here um, and to speak to anybody. Okay, fantastic. And just to say, uh, obviously, thanks also for your questions that everyone uh, has submitted. Uh, we're going to go through some of those now, but do uh, feel free to join in uh, with the session and pick up anything uh, that perhaps we've missed or any reflections uh, that you'd like to make, you can do that by using the hashtag Ask Greenwich, uh, and I've got them uh, coming through here on my phone, uh, and then we'll uh, have hopefully uh, a more engaged conversation. Um, so Matt, I guess coming to you first, I know that you've been doing lots of work uh, with our head teachers and, and schools in order to uh, get children back uh, into school. Um, a question here uh, from Nikki, uh, who's asking, is it the council's ambition that school children will be back uh, to school uh, full time in September? Uh, and what kind of special arrangements uh, are going to be in place to facilitate this? Thank you, Danny, and thank you, Mark, for the question. Um, sorry, Nikki. Um, the short answer is yes, um, and the, we, we, we are ambitious for all children to be back in September. The slightly longer answer is yes, and it's quite difficult. Um, so schools have done an enormous amount of work to get some children back um, in the last few weeks. Uh, schools have been open throughout the pandemic um, to provide places for uh, children um, who are considered vulnerable um, or whose parents are key workers. So they, those adults who've needed to be at work have had um, places for their children throughout. So I think our schools have done a fantastic job. Um, so more children have now gone back and in September, yes, we do expect all children to be back. Um, the government has asked schools to, to reopen for everybody from September and we're confident that schools in Greenwich can do this. It, it is very difficult. Um, schools have been introducing um, one-way systems so that children are, are not all bunched together when they're arrived. Um, they've been rearranging desks. They've been talking about what kind of PPE equipment they need. Um, the borough has been supporting schools to do risk assessments um, and we're, we're confident that it's going well but there are there are huge challenges so the short answer yes we do expect everyone to be back and we think that schools is the best place for kids to be if as long as it's safe um, but yes there are lots of complications that go with that um, that schools are working on then and no doubt there'll be more complications that come up when when more children come back so they'll, they'll need to work on it as they go Just to reassure everyone uh, as well, one of the things which we are uh, picking up because we're extremely concerned about uh, is the government's plans uh, to force the Mayor of London to scrap free travel uh, for children and young people under the age of 16. We know that that would have a massive uh, detrimental effect uh, on, on, on not only children and young people, uh, but also on pet parents and families and carers who are going to be forced uh, into extra costs uh, that they don't currently have. Uh, and what I'll ask one of the team to do, if possible, is to share the link uh, to our petition uh, in there where we're calling on the government uh, to completely scrap uh, these plans. Uh, and it's absolutely ridiculous to expect children and young people uh, and their families to pay uh, the cost of this pandemic. Um, so we'll get that information circulated as well. Now, um, we're a couple of weeks away uh, from, uh, well, actually, I think we're nearly here, actually, summer holidays uh, uh, in terms of ordinary calendar time. Sorry about that. My teacher brain has left, so I've uh, uh, got into a, a new way of life. Matt, what are the plans for children and young people over the summer? Do we have any holiday school schemes running? Uh, we do. So, um, 
there's there's quite a lot going on over the summer and it's been a been a very strange time for a lot of children a lot of families so it's you know there, there are some things to do so um, the borough is working with um, partners to provide um, online courses which is um, under the future versity um, heading and you can find those courses uh, we'll, I think we can put a link up to where you can sign up for those so those are for children who are between 10 and 19 or up to 25 if you have special educational needs now that's available to do online um, there's also quite a lot going on for children who receive um, free school meals um, so we're, we're planning to provide a, um, a service for up to I think it's 540 children um, they'll They'll, it will be the, the younger children in the first couple of weeks and then the older children in the second couple of weeks. And it'll be on, at three places across the borough. Um, so we're planning to provide um, activities between 9am and 2.30. And the activities will be educational and physical and there'll be um, food with those as well. Because we, we are very concerned that families on a, on a tight budget are going to be struggling to feed their children over the, the summer break. Um, so there are um, those activities available. I think you're on mute. Dan. Sorry, there's those words that we're all so sick and tired of hearing after this pandemic of 14 weeks of people screaming at the screen, you're on mute. Uh, so can I just say, uh, building on that really, we're really proud to be providing uh, those 500 free places and they will be free. Uh, for children and young people uh, in receipt of free school meals uh, for a fantastic range of activities across the summer that we're delivering uh, in partnership with Charlton Athletic Community Trust. And what we're going to make sure of uh, is that all, all that information gets out as quickly as possible uh, so that people can sign up. Um, and obviously, I'm afraid we haven't been able to publish it sooner because the guidance around uh, what you can do in terms of social distancing and, and bringing young people together uh, is still very much uh, changing, but that's a great uh, addition to our holiday hunger scheme, um, and we will make sure those details uh, are available uh, as well. So we'll switch to Miranda now uh, for uh, some questions. So Miranda, I suppose just before we get into the questions, um, I suppose it's been a really exceptional time to uh, take over uh, this new role, uh, particularly uh, at such a challenging time. Uh, and I know that we haven't had a pandemic for uh, many, many years. Um, and I guess really what your sort of early thoughts and reflections are uh, and, uh, you know, kind of, I guess, a sense of, of who we need to thank from a health perspective, uh, a health and social care perspective in, in relation to what, what you've seen. Thanks, Dan. I guess thank yous are really, really important. So massive huge thanks to all of our NHS staff across the the two hospitals that serve the borough and guess and, and more than that really so so all um, the staff at QEH and at, and at Lewisham particularly who will have been looking after our residents and the wider London um, family of hospitals as well but also all of our care home staff all of our, our council staff who have supported all of our residents um, in the last 16, 18 weeks, people really have stepped up during this crisis. Nothing has been too much for officers and for staff, and they really have gone above and beyond to support the vulnerable members of our society. And all of our volunteers as well, all our volunteers who've um, put themselves forward to volunteer through the community hub, um, right back at the beginning, some sort of 16 weeks ago now, uh, feels, feels like a lifetime ago. Um, when you put that call out down for volunteers, for people to do shopping for neighbours and to check in on each other. And I think it's, it's made us realise just how resilient our neighbourhoods are and our communities um, and how, how during a crisis like this, we have in general all pulled together. And so thank you to all of those key workers as well, all of our shop staff who've made sure that the early opening times have worked. Um, and and just to all of our communities who, who really have been there for one another. Thank you very much, Miranda. Now, I've got a question here uh, from Teresa, uh, Teresa Everest. Teresa is a sufferer uh, of COPD 
uh, and actually treats her uh, with her condition, uh, finds masks uh, very difficult um, and is asking, is, do, uh, I guess, do the rules apply uh, to sufferers of COPD uh, and kind of where are we uh, more generally on masks? So as was announced, I think in the last 24, 48 hours, face masks in public enclosed spaces will be compulsory as of the 23rd of July, which is next Friday. Um, in terms of Teresa's particular concerns, the guidance around face masks on public transport did say that if putting on, wearing or removing a face covering would cause you severe distress, then you wouldn't need to wear it. I imagine in the next couple of days we'll have further guidance from, from central government around the, the, public, um, the enclosed public spaces, which um, will hopefully make things a little bit clearer as to which spaces are included and who will be needing to wear them. Thank you, Miranda. And I guess just a, a little plea, really, from me. Um, constantly now, we are seeing masks dropped uh, all over the place, uh, particularly in town centres. Uh, and this kind of littering is not only unhygienic, but it's totally unacceptable uh, in the current condition. So uh, please do try, if you can, get a reusable mask, uh, keep hold of it. Uh, and actually, if you do need to dispose of your mask, then please put it in the bin uh, where, it, uh, where it should be. Uh, okay, we've got to move on now from uh, a question um, from uh, Mel uh, of the Bostel Heath Bowls Club. Uh, and Mel is uh, concerned uh, about the impact um, of, uh, of health and safety, uh, particularly of the bowling greens that she says um, are destroyed and neglected. So how can we uh, be claiming to support the health and welfare, welfare of elderly people uh, when our bowling greens uh, are, are allegedly not in good conditions. Miranda? Thanks, Dan. So, um, understandably, during, during the COVID pandemic and at the beginning of it, we had to uh, prioritise services and um, the cutting of the grass and the bowling greens was one of those things that ceased so that staff could be redeployed elsewhere. It's also a service where a number of staff were shielding um, as well. So that's, that's why the bowling greens weren't, weren't being maintained. But as of the, I think it was the 15th, the 11th of July, they've reopened all but Well Hall. So all of our, all of our, just checking we're past the 11th, yes, all of our uh, bowling greens apart from Well Hall Pleasant have been reopened and um, will be back into use. Sadly, uh, during the last couple of months, Well Hall has actually been vandalised, so there's going to be a bit of additional work that needs to be done there um, to bring it back into use. But we are very committed to the health and well-being of all of our older adults, and you will be able to, to be back on the bowling green, um, if not now, very shortly. You're on mute. Sorry. Bad day today. We might get Miranda playing some bowls as well. So if, uh, if you'd like to invite Miranda and Matt down for a game, uh, then do, uh, do let us know. Um, I suppose just also picking up on that point, there are uh, so many wonderful green parks and open spaces where uh, you can go for a walk, uh, you can enjoy some other exercise and all the details of our parks and open spaces um, are available uh, on, uh, on the website. Um, before I ask uh, another question uh, from Miranda, I just want to say I've got a question coming in from, uh, from Linda Chris uh, on Facebook, who's asking something about housing, but it's not really specific. So Linda, if you are there, uh, could you just really um, develop that question a bit more, and then I'll, then I'll get it answered uh, for you shortly. Um, I'm not clear if you're referring to the council office or a part of a different service. Um, so a question Miranda now from uh, Lorraine, um, about um, why a Greenwich Council not doing more to help people uh, with mental health problems to have a safe home uh, of their own. Thank you, and I'd just like to thank Lorraine for, for the question. Um, really, we want to be supporting all of our, all of our residents, all of our older residents, to be uh, able to stay in their homes 
for as long as as long as possible and as long as is suitable. Um, we offer different sorts of support through organisations like Oxley's, um, who commission our mental health services, who we work with to make sure and maintain people in their in their own homes. Um, this feels like it might be more of a specific question, so if Lorraine wants to contact me directly, I'd be more than happy to raise this if there are sort of some wider issues as well. Um, but please feel rest assured that the support is available and if you contact me directly we'll be able to offer that assistance. Thank you, Rhonda. And just to say, uh, Lorraine, we do work very closely with Oxy's NHS Trust uh, to provide a whole range of services to people uh, with mental health, uh, at mental health issues. And I guess uh, what I would say is that we also know this is a time of increasing uh, anxiety and unease for a lot uh, of people. And, and there's a lot of evidence now about the significant impact uh, that this pandemic has had uh, on people's uh, mental health. So if you are experiencing uh, some uh, mental health issues, perhaps anxiety, depression, uh, I'll ask the team now to put in uh, the link to uh, Oxley services uh, where you can find more information uh, about the services available to help uh, deal uh, with those uh, challenges. Um, now, uh, uh, a relevant question, because after this, actually, I'm off. I'm so excited to be going down to uh, the Lido uh, at Charlton uh, for our first trial spin class. And I'm a huge fan uh, of spinning uh, at the gym. Uh, so it's been 18 long weeks for me uh, without my regular uh, weekly exercise. Um, and this question here comes from Brenda, uh, who's asking about how older people uh, are going to be expected to exercise in groups, uh, particularly as they're classed as vulnerable. Uh, now, Miranda, are you able to say anything about that? And when uh, anyone who's shielding uh, is, is now able to unshield? The unmuting is foxing me today, I apologise. Um, so there's, there's really nothing to stop older people uh, to go back to an activity they were doing before. If it's in an outside space and if um, it's suitably socially distanced and uh, following public health guidance, um, so there, there is nothing to stop one doing that. Also, as gyms open, um, they will be following public health uh, guidance in terms of social distancing people will be able to return to using them. As Danny mentioned, the Lido opened at the weekend, which is a wonderful facility in the borough, and, um, and reports have been that the social distancing in place and the, and the timed booking slots is working really well. So if, if swimming is your, your thing, uh, then the Lido is open and available. Um, so really, there is nothing to stop, stop our older adults uh, starting to to do the activities that they they once were shielding ends at the end of july um so again people who who were shielding are, will be able to start uh, taking part in activities as long as they are compliant with public health guidance and they are offering that social distancing and enough space for people to be able to carry it out safely thank you very much for that Amanda. And I guess just to uh, emphasise a couple of things really, so gyms will be reopened from the 25th of July uh, and you, you will have to book a session. I uh, would encourage people to get active, get out uh, and get back uh, involved um, because actually uh, one of the real uh, challenges that we faced around this pandemic uh, is that COVID, uh, a, a real risk factor uh, actually for uh, COVID uh, is people being overweight uh, and, and obviously a lot of people may not have been in as much exercise uh, as they have been and people will have seen the chief medical officer uh, really encouraging people uh, to use the summer uh, to perhaps shed any excess pounds that may have accumulated uh, during the past few weeks um, and ensure uh, that you really are uh, looking after yourself and, and now I think we know uh, what has happened in, in, in the past few weeks. We all have a duty really to prepare uh, and look after ourselves. Uh, and reduce some of those risks uh, as we move into uh, the potential uh, of a second wave. Now I say the potential because they're, you know, I'm not a doctor, many people aren't doctors, and, and this is a kind of commonplace um, 
you know, idea that there is going to be a second wave. And, and in all honesty, none of us really know, uh, but obviously just to assure people uh, that preparations and planning uh, are well underway uh, so that in the event that that does happen, uh, all of our services and NHS colleagues uh, are as ready uh, to deal with that as, as possible. Uh, now we've had uh, that question uh, which I had uh, earlier on uh, from Linda, I think it was about housing and our housing services. Um, so people will know that most of our buildings have been closed to public access um, for the duration uh, of the pandemic um, and that has meant uh, that people who uh, need help uh, have been directed uh, online or to make a call. Now we're hoping to open fully the contact centre uh, from the 3rd of August. There are still uh, precautions and social distancing measures uh, in place, but that really is our target uh, for the return uh, of many face-to-face uh, -face services. If you are experiencing uh, any housing issues, uh, then please do call our switchboard uh, on 0208 854 uh, and they'll be able to put you through uh, to a member of the housing team uh, at the moment. Uh, we've also got a question here uh, from Mike. Uh, Mike is uh, very excited uh, about the new Woolwich Works uh, program. Um, and Mike, just to reassure you, in terms of the opening, uh, unfortunately, uh, as with everything else really, there's been a, a few delays around COVID, um, but you've seen uh, recently the, the addition of another uh, incredible organisation uh, to be resident uh, in Woolwich, uh, at Woolwich Works, which is fantastic. Uh, joining both Punch Drunk, which is the internationally uh, acclaimed group, and also uh, Chinike, uh, who are the country's leading uh, black-led orchestra, which is just a fantastic uh, addition to uh, our community, and we really can't wait uh, to see uh, that being open. We also have a question here uh, from uh, Ajala, uh, who says that Start Well was due to go live in April uh, 2020. Uh, did this go ahead uh, as planned? Uh, Matt, do you know, uh, can you confirm if Startwell uh, is up and running or are we a bit delayed? Um, I'm really sorry, I'm happy to provide some details, but um, I don't think I've got all the details in front of me, sorry. Um, you're, you're on mute, Danny. Um, perhaps I can post underneath this and after, the, after the session. Great, thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, Matt, just while I've also uh, got you here, we had another uh, question um, which we, you alluded to uh, about the holiday hunger scheme uh, for preschool meal children and, and actually all children who uh, are in need of food uh, over the holidays. Um, do you have any more details of the scheme? Yeah, so um, schools are going to be sent details of how to sign up. Um, so you should receive contact through your school um, if if your your child receives free school meals, um, if for any reason you don't and you you want your child to be included, then do get in contact um, with us. Um, the uh, the the sorry, I'm I'm looking at my notes. Um, so the the program starts on the 27th of July, um, and the first two weeks will be for children um, eight till twelve. Sorry. Um, and then the second two weeks will be for children 13 to 16. Um, so all those activities will include food. Um, so please, sorry, Danny, go on. No, no. So, sorry, um, are you gonna add something in there, Matt? Um, I'm sorry, I'm... I'm Uh, that, oh. That's all I wanted to say at the moment. Sorry, Danny. Okay, great. And uh, I know uh, earlier on in the chat function, uh, our comms colleagues have added in uh, some further details about that scheme. So uh, please keep uh, a lookout uh, there. Um, we've had uh, another question about uh, why uh, it has been uh, slow to implement social distancing measures. Uh, and I have to say, I completely disagree. Uh, with that assertion. Uh, actually, we have implemented uh, three significant schemes uh, in our major town centres, uh, and actually our, our council offices have worked uh, flat out not only to implement those schemes, uh, but also secure uh, a surplus of eight to £800,000 uh, to implement in new, in new uh, wider measures. Uh, I think that people 
uh, you know, and, and actually in comparison to other boroughs, that's a, a really healthy sum of money. Uh, and we're really pleased that we've been able to work with Transport for London to do that. Uh, it's worth pointing out that actually many parts of Transport for London uh, have been furloughed, uh, so everyone uh, is under uh, incredible pressure. Uh, and actually, you know, really, I'm afraid we can't go any faster uh, in the current uh, climate than, than, than how fast uh, we go in. We've now published all the details uh, of the schemes that we've secured. Uh, and are actively working uh, with Transport for London uh, on bringing forward the Greenwich uh, to Woolwich uh, cycleway uh, and what we can do uh, to implement uh, that scheme as quickly uh, as possible. And um, so that's all I wanted to say uh, on the active uh, travel measures. Um, there's also uh, a question from Chris here um, about uh, some of the roadworks that we're doing in unmarked uh, traffic lanes. If you've got a uh, particular concern uh, about that and you think it is dangerous, um, then please do uh, take an image of what you're concerned about and send it over to us so, and we will check. Um, and that should be uh, something, you know, all of our schemes will be signed off uh, by the road, uh, road safety team uh, as well. Okay, now I'm just going to do a final check for any other questions uh, that have uh, come in. Uh, hopefully I think uh, we have answered uh, all of them. Uh, yeah, so that looks like that's the uh, no, no further questions here at the moment. Um, so just while the team double check that for me, um, Matt, any uh, final uh, thoughts and reflections? I suppose as the uh, new cabinet member for children and young people about where we're going to end up next. Well, yeah, it's it's been it's been really interesting to start now because there's so much going on. Um, but what I'm really aware of is how different um, people's experience of lockdown has been. Because some children have, have had just a really nice time talking to Nan on Zoom and making banana bread and all this you know, sort of stuff. And I, I think those children will, will come back to school and bounce back. Um, and some people have been having a difficult time because they've, they've felt really stressed um, and they've been losing their time at school. And actually... For a lot of kids, time at school is is a very structured thing um, where you you know receive a lot of good support so it, it has been a very difficult time for families and everyone 's been having a different experience so I think as as children come back to school um, there's there's going to be um, a lot for teachers to do um, to try and help kids to catch up and there's you know a lot of a lot of fear and a lot of difficult experiences that people have been going through. So I've, I've been extremely impressed. I've, I've been out to visit um, with Willow Dean and I've been impressed by what, by what so many of our schools have been um, children and in fact, the whole family is during this, this period. Um, so it, it, is a, it is an unknown situation, all the, all the coming back and there's still a lot of worries. Um, so I, I do accept that it's been very difficult for a lot of people, but I think we have a lot, a lot to be thankful for, for our public services as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and Miranda, before I bring you in, I just want to answer a couple of, uh, there's a few more questions coming in now. So a uh, question from uh, Morwenna James, who's asking about mental health support uh, for young people and online events uh, that may be organised. Actually, uh, we've done, uh, Matt and myself uh, did a great listening session with some young people uh, from the Youth Council and also from our Young Greenwich uh, work with, with Child Perfect Community Trust. Um, and there's also uh, a whole range of work that they're doing over the summer. Um, so if we can add in uh, the decision, um, sorry, add in the Twitter handles uh, for um, Charlton Athletic Community Trust uh, and Young Greenwich to the chat, uh, that'd be helpful for more winner uh, to pick those up. Uh, a question from Sandra, uh, who has asked uh, about the civic awards, which we know were planned uh, and cancelled. Uh, a real shame because that's one of the great events uh, for the year. Uh, what we're going to be doing, Sandra, uh, is basically rather than having a big ceremony and um, having the sort of small groups coming into the town hall uh, over August to collect uh, their awards from the mayor and myself uh, and hopefully uh, a socially distant cup of tea uh, in the mayor's parlour. Um, and then uh, we're also uh, planning to have uh, another uh, award ceremony uh, really for our sort of COVID uh, superstars and people who've gone uh, you've just done incredible things in these past uh, weeks. Um, so we're picking uh, that up. Uh, and Cliff has asked about uh, the deficit. Um, and 
talked about reducing back office jobs. Um, well, unfortunately, Cliff, I guess um, the problem with your question is that actually we do need people uh, to work in the back office uh, to process a whole range uh, of things, uh, including uh, blue badges, uh, planning applications, you know, a whole range uh, of stuff, which is about providing uh, public services and essential public services uh, to people in Greenwich. The key point on finances, uh, frankly, is that the government promised weeks and weeks ago that they would stand by uh, local government and do whatever it takes uh, to support us in the pandemic. Um, and those words haven't uh, borne themselves out to be true. Uh, as London councils and as, as one of the 32 councils uh, in the capital, uh, we have spent already £600 million uh, in relation to COVID. Uh, the allocation to London from the government uh, has been around £500 million, so we're already uh, £100 million down. Uh, and also, uh, we come into this pandemic uh, after 10 years of sustained uh, and depressing, vicious austerity that's taken £1,400 uh, out of every single Greenwich household in terms of uh, the funding that we would have uh, to deliver those basic uh, public services. Um, so things are really, really tight. And unless uh, the government uh, do uh, provide the money that we need, because this pandemic was not our fault, it's not your fault, it's, it's happened, uh, then actually we'll have no choice uh, but to come forward uh, with another budget, uh, an emergency budget, uh, that will see uh, public uh, sector reductions. Um, and that, that is the awful truth uh, of the matter. Um, so we'll keep, uh, keep you posted uh, on there. Um, Chris, thanks for confirming you've sent your photos in. Uh, I'm not sure uh, who to, but if you send them to myself, uh, I'll try uh, and pick that up as well. Uh, a question from Sheldon Allen uh, about free travel. Uh, and we talked about uh, the campaign that we're already uh, running uh, and have hopefully shared our petition uh, in the chat function. Um, to continue to keep the pressure on the government uh, to continue to fund that. Um, so Miranda, any thoughts and final reflections from you? Thanks, Dan. Just really, I think again, to reiterate the thanks that I started with, I've just been, since the taking this portfolio in, in May, I've been blown away by the, by the sector's response to this pandemic and the community response. Ideally, when starting a new portfolio, I like to do sort of a series of visits and clearly that has just not been possible to get out to any of our care homes or sheltered accommodation or, or even the hospitals. So um, I'm really hopeful that as, as uh, restrictions lift, I'll be able to get out and visit quite a number, number of you. So, so if, you'd like, if you'd like me to come down, then please uh, drop me an email and I'd, I'd love to come and see you. But just a really, really big thanks to, to everybody that supported all of our communities over the last 16, 18 weeks. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Miranda. Uh, a final question here from Richard, who's uh, got some noise issues. Uh, Richard, if you can contact the council's noise team, uh, then we would uh, seek to support you uh, in addressing uh, those issues uh, and see what we can do. Um, Sheila, uh, Sheila's asked, um, Sheila Kirby here is a housing uh, issue. Sheila, could also uh, email me. Um, there would be, um, that would be really beneficial uh, in terms uh, of, of moving that case forward and I'll do uh, what I can. Um, so a final thing really, just to say, uh, as Miranda said, uh, face coverings uh, are gonna be compulsory. Uh, and actually, uh, I've got mine here. It's, uh, Sister Action inspired uh, face covering. Uh, all profits of these go to uh, the NHS, uh, which is uh, really a great thing to do. Uh, but please make sure that you do have a covering, uh, and particularly uh, going into shops uh, and enclosed uh, spaces, uh, because we all have to do uh, our bit to stop the spread uh, of the virus and protect uh, other people. And actually shop workers uh, have been really uh, proved themselves to be such essential key workers uh, in this crisis that we all need to do our bit uh, to protect them. Uh, finally, um, just to say if you've got some time on your hands uh, and would like to get involved in uh, something else council related, uh, we're underway with our parks consultation. Uh, we're really proud of all of the parks and green spaces that we have uh, in Greenwich that have proved themselves to be truly invaluable in this crisis. Um, prior to COVID, uh, we'd established a £1 million parks investment fund and we want your ideas 
uh, about how, uh, how and where we should spend that money. Um, so I'll ask the team uh, in the chat function now uh, just to add in uh, the details of the parks consultation uh, and you can pick, those, uh, pick that up there. And also just to say that we do hope uh, and we'll definitely be back uh, with another round uh, of Ask Greenwich sessions uh, in the autumn. Um, and I hope uh, that you've uh, enjoyed them uh, as much as we have. Uh, so do try uh, and enjoy uh, the sunshine. If there's any peering out the window, there's none immediately obvious, but let's hope it's coming soon. Uh, thanks for joining us today, uh, and we hope uh, that you have a good uh, break over the summer holidays.